We try to have some thought of leadership here, how it works. And it works in many different ways. You worked with uh, President Faust when she ran the Radcliffe Institute and vice versa. What have you learned from her leadership and what does she maybe have learned from yours? I remember um, when uh, Drew became, when I became president, uh, Drew had uh, very, only very recently um, become uh, the dean of the Radcliffe Institute. And the Radcliffe Institute, which was a kind of institute, was not a kind of, was an institute for advanced study, was a different thing that had existed before at Harvard and was a different thing than people had previously associated with uh, Radcliffe. And I remember being impressed, really hugely impressed, because it wouldn't have occurred to me, but it was obviously right, that Drew was systematically building a connection with every part of the university for the Radcliffe Institute in part because there were good things to be done jointly between the Radcliffe Institute and other parts of the university, and she wanted to do as many of them as possible. And in part because she understood what I insufficiently appreciated until I learned uh, from her example, that by doing that, she was creating a very strong foundation for the Radcliffe Institute to be able to innovate with approval, to be able to do things as opportunities pre presented uh, themselves, and that she was bringing a whole community along in support of her institution. And I watched the way she did that in a variety of different uh, Places and it was a uh, very powerful uh, example uh, for me of what kinds of, th not one I was always successful in following, but a very powerful uh, example of what was involved in uh, bringing people along. President Faust? So you can see an example today of how Larry always pushes, how can it be better? How can we do it better? How can we not allow trailing edges that we neglect that are um, at odds with what we really believe in? And that was, Larry was my boss for six and a half years. Or almost, no, it was, would have five been five, years. five, five years. years because I, I was at Radcliffe for six and a half. But Larry was my boss for six, for five years. And we'd have these meetings and, and We'd often actually talk about universities the way we've talked about them this morning and try together to dream up how we would bring changes that we thought were important and how I could help make the Radcliffe Institute part of that. But Larry's also had a big intellectual impact on me and I'd just like to say two parts of that because it's partly about how I think generally but it's also about how I think as a leader. He is an economist as you all know and when I would go in to talk to him about the Radcliffe Institute, he would always challenge me to think in the terms of his discipline, not just how's your budget, but just the accountability and the numeracy that was at the heart of how he thought. And I have a chapter in the book I wrote um, during the, the last years of my time at Radcliffe that has a chapter about counting the dead in the Civil War. That chapter would never have been there if I hadn't been counting everything with Larry Summers for the <laughs> preceding four years. It just gave me a different perspective on how thinking through numbers is a worldview. There's another part of this too, which may be the social scientist and the humanist. I would always take it, we'd be talking about a problem, and my notion of dealing with a problem would be to make it more complex, to see more points of view and more things. Larry's notion of a problem would be to simplify it and solve it. And I think that's partly Ooh. the economist and the humanist. But it was, again, a perspective that I found very valuable.